25 minutes, we'll be discussing just ways to encourage student connection and their confidence. And how I'm approaching this is through sharing a bit about how I use videos within my classes. So I'm Melissa and I'll share a little bit about me in just a moment, but really the purpose of today, how I'm gonna structure our time together is we're gonna set some intentions and then choose, discuss how we can choose themes for different quarters. And then I'll show you some videos that I've made and used as a way of enhancing student engagement and connection. So um, there will be lots of time for questions at the end, and then Leanna and I, Leanna and I are going to be doing um, a panel, so you can bring questions there as well. But throughout um, this presentation, I just would invite you to add within the chat box if you feel called to. Um, so I'm Melissa. I'm I'm a psychologist, and I live in Canada. And my husband and I have a private practice called Canmore Counseling. Um, I'm a yes. I'll turn up my volume. Thank you. Can you hear me better? Okay. So I'm a psychologist, and my husband and I have a private practice called Canmore Counseling, and I teach for. City University, mostly online, as well as for the past three years, um, I've gone down to Mexico and enjoyed teaching at CETES for in both Tijuana and Mexicali. And it has been such a joy to find ways to connect with students um, when we're not in person. I also uh, teach yin yoga and meditation. I'm a PhD student and you can't really see me very well because I feel like my my web is going on this computer, but I need it to see me through this degree. I can't learn a new computer. <laughs> so I would say that, yeah, overall, I'm a, a psychology geek and I'm a dog mom and we live here in Canmore, Alberta in the Rocky Mountains. And I included a picture of me and Lulu up at the dog park, our favorite place to be. And yeah, just wanted to share a fun, fun picture of me and just so you get to know who I am a bit. So as we start this session, I want to invite you into a process of intention setting. This is something that I use most days just when I'm going into something new or transitioning from one task to another. And I find that this can be a really beautiful way to be intentional as we're showing up as as instructors. So I'll, I'll guide you through this process and I invite you to practice along if you're comfortable. So you can start by closing your eyes if that fits for you. Otherwise, you can just kind of gaze down your nose. And I invite you to just start by taking three beautiful breaths. So inhale through your nose and then exhale through your mouth. Inhale fully. Big exhale. Last one. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And if it's comfortable, you can keep your eyes closed. And I invite you to check in with yourself. Begin by checking in by asking the question, how do I feel right now? So how do you feel right now? Another check-in question is, what do you hope for your students? What do you hope for your students? Next question, how do you want to feel as an instructor? How do you want to feel as an instructor? And then lastly, taking one big, beautiful breath in through your nose. And then exhale. Set an intention for our time together. Maybe it's to be present or open, whatever fits for you. And when you've got that intention, 
you can gently open your eyes if they're closed. And if you're comfortable, please share in the chat box. What's your intention for our time together? I just added mine. Mine's to be present and completely myself. So I'd love to hear from others. What's your intention? And so, yeah, sharing only if you're comfortable, but really what, what I'm curious about and passionate about is how to enhance classroom connection, especially in an online environment. And I am an online student as well. I got my master's in an online setting and then I'm working on my PhD in an online university. And I find that I'm most connected to instructors that I feel like I know. And so some things that I came up with to gently encourage you or to inspire you with is to be exactly who you are. And, and using videos, we can be that. We can let our students into our lives a little bit and letting them know what we love and, and to provide students with support and encouragement. And maybe that comes through gentle reminders so that they stay on task. Um, and also sharing our best hopes as instructors with clear communication. So often we have different expectations. From one instructor to the next, we expect different things from our students. And I find that when we're really clear through videos, we can share it in such a warm and encouraging way. And one way that I find really helps to enhance connection outside of the forums is by prompting for a response after a video. Um, and I'll share examples later on in this session. Um, and then also using the announcement as a way to share your video, but also to um, invite students into reflective learning activities. So maybe even adding like short films or multimedia supports. So exa for example, I often, depending on what we're talking about in class, and I teach a lot of psychology, Empathy tends to come up and is important in all aspects and, and in all um, faculties. And so I will often share Brene Brown's animated short film called The Power of Empathy. And I find that that's just such a neat way to help students learn in a different way. Um, and so usually what I like to do is when I'm using videos in a class, I like to choose a theme. So how do I choose a theme? So for example, it could be self-care or it could be self-inquiry, getting to know yourself better. And depending on what class you're teaching, you might want to develop a different theme. So the first question that I would ask myself is, and would it pose to each of you, and I would love to hear in, in the comment section, in the chat box, what is your why? Why are you, an instructor for CU? Why are you an, a university instructor? What's your why? What's your purpose? What's your passion? Jennifer, I love it. You want to inspire students. Irina, I see that your intention is to gain some valuable knowledge about making connections to students. Beautiful. Yeah, we'd love to hear other people's why to make learning fun and enjoyable. Absolutely. Yeah. And what would you need as a student? So this is tapping into some self-reflection. And I would love to hear from each of you, if you're comfortable, what would you need as a student if you were learning in this online environment? Awesome. I love reading the other What's your why? Thank you. To help educate new professionals and attempt to bridge the gap between academia and practice. Patrick, to advance knowledge. So what would you need as a student? To feel connected to my instructor. Absolutely. Me too. I feel more known and I feel more engaged in the content when I know that I have support and that I can seek out help. As a student, I would need effective feedback. Absolutely, yeah. And what do you believe supports growth and learning? So this is again tapping into really what's driving you as an instructor and how you wanna show up to your students. What do you believe supports growth and learning?
for me, I feel like connection. Yeah, empathy and goal setting, beautiful. Reduce costs for overseas students by not coming to the US for the entire duration of the degree program, yeah. Safe space to explore, absolutely, I love these. A safe learning environment where I can be me. Yeah, Cindy, that's awesome. And then my final reflection question, just with regards to a theme, is what do you hope for as the instructor? So when you think about starting a new quarter, a new class, or multiple classes, what are your best hopes as the instructor? To help turn the light on. Nice. Motivated students. Absolutely. Yeah. To share knowledge. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, these are the, this is the gold. I really think that this is exactly what keeps us motivated and engaged with our students. When we can stay connected to our purpose and our why and what we're needing, we can then encourage students through modeling and also by inviting them by sharing our passion. Tony, I love it, to create an aha moment. Nice. So um, I'm teaching a culture based course this semester um, for Athabasca University, which is another university I teach at. And so I'm using self-care as the theme. So I thought I would just give this as an example since I'm working with it right now. And so how I got to that is, what's my why? Well, really, I want to empower students to grow as healthy professionals. And what would I need as a student? Encouragement, support, and access to my instructor. And what do I believe support growth and learning? Self-care. And I say this like I'm a broken record, that the better we take care of ourselves, the better able we are to take care of those that we care about. And especially in helping professions, we have to be taking such good care of ourselves so that we can show up and be present. And I think that even goes for us as instructors. The more we're taking good care of ourselves, the more engaged and authentic we are with our students. What do I hope for as an instructor? An instructor. So my best hope is always that students will take good care of themselves, and in that, they'll take responsibility for their well-being. They'll take responsibility for their education, and they'll ask for what they need. And what I mean by that, in something that I reflected on in a video that I posted the week before last to my class, is that ultimately self-care is kind of getting to the place where we know what we're needing rather than putting expectations that someone's going to understand without us telling them. So with students, especially in an online environment, we don't know how they're doing and we need to we need to invite them into letting us know if or when they need help rather than waiting till at the end they give feedback that maybe they didn't get what they needed and then they're the ones that are missing out rather than us as the instructors. So just encouraging those ideas that that is self-care. Okay, so I have some examples of my video. I don't think that the the sound works through Collaborate. So um, I will just show you through Vimeo. So I'll share my screen. But I just wanted to show you because I upload my videos. I just make, take my video on my iPhone and then I upload it into my Vimeo account. And I find Vimeo is a little easier and more intuitive to work with in comparison to YouTube. I was struggling with YouTube. So Vimeo tends to be quite easy to use. And also, um, it has a clearer picture for some reason. And you can keep it private, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to shift into Vimeo. And I'll just play it for 10 seconds just so you get to see it, but you might not be able to hear it. Okay, so that's just a little example. And back to the presentation. 
Okay, here we go. Um, but I will post those in the chat box, so you can certainly have a look at them later on after we have completed our time together. And really, I wanted to share my welcome message that I included, which is really letting students know who I am, that I'm on the other side of the screen. I'm not just some kind of <laughs> marking person that will grade them on their stuff, but really that I'm a person who really cares about them. And also introducing the theme of self-care and inviting them into what self-care looks like in my own life. Um, and then I also included in the chat box a link to um, a week six video that I made, which is, we'll show you kind of how I'm integrating some of the concepts that we're discussing in class, while also tying it back to my theme of self-care. Um, yeah, so question here, do you use the Vimeo Basic or the paid ver version? I ended up finding that I was using Vimeo so often that I I have the paid version and it feels well worth it because it's just more intuitive and just easier to kind of organize my videos and keep them private and they don't get exposed to all of the online world. You get to kind of choose how to share them. Okay, so as we move into integrating this idea of just using videos as a way of connecting with your students. Again, I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. And you've heard about a lot of new things today in this conference. So I want to just spend some time integrating that learning by intention setting as you move away from this conference into a new quarter or as you're continuing the classes that you're teaching currently. So again, if you're, if you're comfortable, let's close our eyes. And again, if you're not comfortable, just gaze, find a gazing point just as you come to have soft eyes. And if your eyes are closed, just being gentle and starting to relax your body. And again, let's take three beautiful breaths. So inhale fully. Exhale fully. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Let it all go. You can gently open your eyes if you're comfortable. And staying connected to your breath if that fits. And you can keep your eyes closed if you want to. But if you're comfortable, you can share. Just check in with yourself. How am I feeling right now? So how are you feeling right now? And you can share it in the text box if you like. Inspired night. I'm feeling grateful. So tapping in, how do I feel right now? Happy, nice, Jennifer. And if you're, if you're ready to move on to the next question, as you move into setting intentions as you move forward outside of the session, what do you hope for your students? At the core of who you are, what do you most want for the students that you get to inspire and encourage? What came up for me just now is, I. I want for them to feel passion and purpose and to have fun in the learning experience. Ah, to know themselves and have confidence in their skill set. Beautiful. Yes. Love that. That they will be just as passionate about education as you are. <laughs> Thank you. That's nice, Jennifer. As I said at the beginning, I'm a bit of a psychology geek, so. <laughs> Nice. So keep coming back to that question just whenever you feel like you need to check in. What do you most hope for your students? And next question, how do you want to feel as an instructor? When you think over the whole day or the whole evening of being here in this conference, being inspired by different ideas and, and different faculty, maybe you haven't met before, 
how can you integrate that? How do you want to feel as an instructor? Yeah, confident. What came up for me was passionate. When I think what came up for me too is like when I'm marking, which is not when I feel the best, I still want to feel connected to the students so that I can connect to the hard work that they're doing. So feeling really present when I'm marking. At the end, the conclusion of an in-person class, I feel, feel euphoria. Beautiful. <laughs> Sounds like you're doing amazing work in there. That's awesome. Okay, and I'm going to invite you to close your eyes just one last time and take one big, beautiful breath in. Exhale through your mouth. Set an intention for how you want to show up as an instructor. Maybe using one word or a few words. How do you want to show up as an instructor? And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and share in the in the chat box if that fits for you. I just shared that how I want to show up is I really want to be authentic with my students. And by being authentic, I can share the joys and the difficulties that come with the helping profession and and being a student and being still just part of life that how to navigate the, the stressors that we have so what's your intention as you move forward nice i want to demonstrate as i educate beautiful so much power in modeling and it sounds like you're doing it already nice so feel free to continue adding if you like. And um, I'm happy to open it up to any questions or comments that you have. Um, noting that, yeah, Liana and I will be in the panel right after, so you can bring them there as well. Um, also, I invite you to, you can show, send me an email if you ever feel like you want to share your experiences if you're practicing using videos. And I'm going to add the video links again in the text box so that you can check them out after if, if you like. So thank you for having me and thank you for spending this time with me. I feel really grateful to have had this opportunity. Does anyone have any questions? No, you're welcome. Thank you. Wonderful. So maybe we can wrap up for now and feel free to join Liana and I in the panel right after.